In a winter wonderland of snow-covered mountain homes, a fireman like Lieutenant John Creel knows a house can burn up in minutes, even in drifts of snow. A fire will double in size every, they say, every 30 seconds. It all comes down to getting water on the fire. You have 1,000 gallons of water on this particular truck at 1,250 gallons a minute. So initially, you really only have about 45 seconds worth of water. Connect a fire hose to a fire hydrant, then the fire truck can pump water and put out the fire. But when the fire hydrant is hidden and buried under piles of snow, that multiplies the emergency. Having two or three guys dig out the fire hydrant while you're supposed to be fighting fire uh, really reduces the manpower and, and the ability to do your job. If you're searching for a fire hydrant or you can't access that water quickly, it can turn the whole operation into a, uh, a problem. The Hoodland Fire Station in Government Camp gets lots of snow. We had uh, out in front of the fire station, we were trying to dig the hydrant out on a daily basis because we get up to 10 feet of snow. That wasn't working out really well. We have over 40 hydrants in this area. But the digging wasn't working out because after we would dig, even if it didn't snow a lot, the plow would come by and bury what we just dug out. Then if it snowed a lot, uh, it would bury it. Then even if it wasn't snowing and the wind picked up, it would fill in the hole that we just dug. So there were three things that really weren't working out very well for us. And we were spending a lot of time and a lot of money doing it. So how do you solve the buried fire hydrant challenge? Just stick a pole in the snow to mark the spot to dig out the hydrant. Hmm, still have to dig, dig, dig. Raise the fire hydrant by extending it above the ground. Hmm, hard to reach in the summer. What about building little houses around the hydrant? Hmm, more digging and digging. John Creel has an inventive mind. His solution? Extension water pipes that reach up above the snow. He calls it a snorkel. It's so simple. I always tell people, I go, you know, I wish somebody else would have thought of this because then I would have had more time to do other things. John likes to simplify the problem and figure out a solution. The toughest part of the process was making something very simple to where a fireman needs no extra tools. He can get off the truck with the hydrant wrench and that's the same thing he would get off the truck in the summer. So we keep the hydrants low and we put these aluminum extenders on them and when the snow continues to snow we can, we can go with Mother Nature and we're not limited. Uh, we've gone as high as 10 to 12 feet, and a lot of people go, well, how do you get up there? Well, you, there's a lot of ways. You can tow in and go up the bank and plug in. You can step off the top of the fire truck that's 12 feet high onto the snow bank or <laughs> step down when he stops the truck and plug in. But as soon as you, you step off the truck with the hydrant wrench and the hose, the fire truck goes to the fire. And by the time he stops, you've charged the fire hose just like you would have in the summer, except you're in snow. The hydrant snorkel is a success. When I had the patent search done, there was nothing out there. And the patent covered the method of taking the hydrant and also the equipment that goes on the hydrant. It saves lives, protects property, and... I believe it enhances the quality of life in a community and it makes people actually aware in many cases for the first time that buried fire hydrants don't help protect lives and homes. John encourages inventors that seek his help. So a lot of people have ideas and they like to take those ideas to the next level. And I think it's, it's for me it's a lot of fun when they call me and ask what direction and of course they don't tell me what their idea is the first month or so because it's top secret 
But generally, after a month or so, when they get to know me and they know that I don't have any interest of stealing anybody's idea, I just like to see them pursue it. They show me what it is, and they start working it out. And, and I like to see, I find that rewarding in itself. I think the funnest part is building something and having, seeing something and saying, you know, this could work. And, and it's the, the getting there process that is the most fun. Once it's actually there, you kind of go, well, okay, that's great. But now what am I going to do next?